Hello and welcome to this third video example of where we can apply first order differential equations in engineering. Again, as with our previous examples, if you haven't watched our videos where we introduce the topic of differential equations and how we can solve first order differential equations, it's worth going back and watching those first before we jump into this example. But let's say that we have a situation like the one pictured here where we have a pulley subjected to a tension T and that pulley has a contact angle which we're going to give um, the symbol theta with this pulley and we also have uh, some element of friction we're going to give a coefficient of friction we're going to use the symbol mu to represent the coefficient of friction in this particular scenario and let's suppose that we can express this whole system using a single order first order differential equation that looks something like this. We have dt by d theta is equal to mu t. And let's suppose we're also told that when theta equals zero, t equals 100 newtons. And so we're going to answer two parts of this question here. We're going to first of all determine the tension t at an angle of two radians if mu, the coefficient of friction, is equal to 0.25. And the second thing we're going to do is determine the angle theta if the tension is 200 newtons. So first of all, uh, to, in order to work out uh, part A, we're going to rearrange our equation to collect like terms. And so similar to our previous examples, rather than dt by d theta equals mu t, we now have d theta equals dt over mu t. Another way we can express that same thing is to say that d theta is equal to 1 over mu t dt. And so what we notice here is we now have an expression where we've collected like terms in that all of the theta terms are on the left-hand side and all of the t terms are on the right-hand side. So next we integrate both sides, um, integrating d theta or 1 d theta. We're now integrating 1 with respect to theta as it were. And on the right hand side we're integrating uh, 1 over mu t with respect to t. And so left hand side when we integrate 1 with respect to theta uh, we, had, we just get theta. And on the right hand side, when we integrate 1 over mu t with respect to t, we end up with 1 over mu times the natural logarithm of t. We've discussed this particular uh, integral identity in a previous video, if you're unsure where that's come from, uh, or you can refer to a table of standard integrals. The last thing to add on the end here is this plus c. We've performed an indefinite integral, so we'll have this unknown constant plus c on the end. So here we have our general solution, again not knowing the value of that constant, um, and we can move to our particular solution by taking the initial values we were given at the start. We were told that um, when theta equals 0, t equals 100, 100 newtons. And so we can substitute these into our expression uh, for theta and t respectively. So now we have 0 equals 1 over mu times the natural logarithm of 100 plus c. And subtracting um, our term from both sides here, we can rearrange to say that c is equal to minus 1 over mu times the natural logarithm of 100. So now we have our particular solution because we can revisit our general solution, which was theta equals 1 over mu times the natural logarithm of t. But now we know the value of c, so rather than plus c, we can say that it's minus 1 over mu times the natural logarithm of 100. We can simplify this a little bit by taking out a common factor of 1 over mu. And so we have 1 over mu log t minus log 100, where they're both natural logarithms still. And again, remembering, same as in our previous videos, one of the laws of logarithms, um, what we have here, log t minus log 100 is the same as log t over 100. 
And so we can say something like this um, as, a, as, a, as a tidier solution for theta. So returning back to our original question, part A asked us to find the tension T. And so we need to rearrange our equation here in terms of T rather than, um, or, or T equals rather than theta equals. And so the way we're going to do this, first of all, is to uh, multiply both sides by mu. So now we have uh, log t over 100 equals mu theta. And then we're going to take exponentials of both sides or, or raise each side of the equation as a power of e. And so what we have is on the left hand side, our exponential and log natural logarithm are seen to cancel one another out in a way, and we're simply left with t over 100. And on the right-hand side, we've raised mu theta to the, uh, as a power of e, so we have e to the power mu theta. And then finally, some rearrangement multiplying both sides by 100. We have t equals 100 e to the power of mu theta. So returning to the question again, part a, we were asked to determine the tension T when the angle was two radians and the coefficient of friction was 0 0.25. Well, we've done uh, the difficult work here because we have our um, expression in terms of T, um, or T equals rather. And so now when we substitute um, our values in for the angle theta and the coefficient of friction mu, we see something like this, uh, 100E, to the power 0 0.25 times 2 and that gives us a result of 164.872 newtons. In the second part of the question, part b, we were asked to determine the angle theta if the tension is 200 newtons and so the easiest way to go about this is probably just to revisit an earlier formulation that we saw before, the one that looked like this, uh, theta equals 1 over mu times the natural logarithm of t over 100. And again, we're told that the tension is 200, and mu, we're still going to keep the same um, as 0 0.25. And so we see something that looks like this, and we get a result of 2.77 radians. So again, I hope you found this video useful, as with our previous examples, to see how we can apply first-order differential equations in different engineering scenarios.